Hi there, it's Professor Brian Gordon from Exam Success. And we're back with another great question from one of our students regarding calculating the yield to maturity on a bond. And so I think that there's two issues that you need to be aware of. Number one, is the question asking you for the approximate yield to maturity or is it just simply asking you to calculate the yield to maturity? So in another video, we talked about what yield to maturity was, but in this one, we're gonna tackle the issue in terms of the difference between the calculations. And in this example, what I'm referring to is using a formula to calculate the approximate yield to maturity versus using the calculator for the yield to maturity. And it may uh, come to you and seem like it's the same thing, but they do give slightly different answers. And the way this exam is set up, they, this may be the difference maker in terms of a correct or incorrect answer. So we're gonna crack the code here between approximate yield to maturity and, uh, and just simply calculating the yield to maturity. So you're gonna to have to read the question carefully. All right, so uh, let's uh, set up the situation here. So we have a bond and this bond uh, pays its interest on a semi-annual basis. Remember that, even if they don't tell us, we're gonna assume semi-annual. Uh, there's a six years to maturity. The price of the bond, the price of the bond is at 97.5% of par. The par value is 100. And the annual coupon is $4. So we've got, uh, we've got the information down here. So uh, if we use our financial calculator here to calculate the yield to maturity, uh, let's go ahead and plug in these values and we will uh, see what this comes up with. So we'll turn the calculator on and uh, let's now uh, uh, make sure that we have our calculator set up. Last time we saw this, making sure that the uh, payments uh, per year were set to one. All right, that's great because now we're gonna make our own adjustments in terms of these uh, figures for the bond. So six year bond paying semi-annually, we'll multiply this by two, we will get 12 uh, payments. Okay, this is what we're gonna enter for N. Uh, we have the present value, we have the future value. The coupon, this is an annual coupon, we need to divide this by two. So this gives us a $2 coupon per period. So let's go ahead and enter these uh, 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 items into the calculator to see what it gives us for the yield to maturity. Remember, it doesn't matter what order we enter this in. So uh, we'll put in, uh, well, let's uh, clear this off and go back to 12 uh, payments. 97.5 uh, as our present value, 100 as our future value, $2 as the payment. And now we're gonna compute uh, the, uh, the interest the discounting rate. So if I push compute and interest, oh, we get this message that says error five. Okay, so this is another common <laughs> uh, item that my students have asked me about. What does this error five mean? Well, we need to tell the calculator about inflows and outflows. Inflows are items which you are receiving and getting back. So for example, the $2 coupon would be an inflow, something that we receive each period. The $100 par value or face value at maturity, that's another inflow. An outflow refers to a payment that we are making. So outflows would be the cost of the bond. Now, we need to label these. Outflows must be labeled as negative values. And inflows, we're gonna 
label as positive values. So in our calculator, we have labeled everything as positive values. So we need to now make an adjustment and uh, uh, change the purchase price from a positive number to a negative number. So 97.5, now we're gonna use this plus minus key. Do not use the negative, or the subtraction key, that's wrong. Use the plus minus key, you can see it now, it's registered, and we will enter this as the present value. Now we can compute the interest and it gives us 2.239. This is the semi-annual uh, interest rate. And if we multiply this by two, we now have an answer of four, let's write this down for us, 4.4797%. I'm writing down a few decimals there because uh, this is using the calculator. Uh, we have calculated the yield. Now I began this discussion talking about uh, using the approximate yield to maturity. So let's hang on and we'll see here uh, as we compare this uh, at the end uh, uh, the, uh, of this uh, uh, video, you'll see the conclusion. But let's go through the steps right now. Okay, so we're gonna clear off this information and now we're going to use the approximate yield to maturity uh, formula. Okay, so uh, let's uh, keep this, uh, this yield to maturity that we calculated with our calculator up here. And uh, let's clear off some of this uh, material so we can have some space uh, to write on here. And uh, so let's put in the information. First of all, the formula that we need for the approximate yield to maturity. So uh, I'm gonna write down y, uh, t, uh, uh, the, uh, the YTM. So this approximate yield to maturity. So we have the interest income, INT uh, uh, income, INC, interest income. And then we're gonna have plus or minus and now this term is referred to as the, uh, the uh, price gain or loss per period. So I'm gonna say change in price per period, per period. Okay, so we've got two components there. All of this will be divided by the purchase price, which I'll call PP, the purchase price, plus the face value or the maturity value, I'll just say FV, divided by two, the average of those two values. This is our formula for the approximate yield to maturity. And we're going to have to calculate this in steps. So, uh, so this change in price per period, we'll have to tackle this. So I'll do this first. Then I will calculate uh, the, uh, the entire numerator. I will add the interest income. So we'll say that's step two. Then in step three, I will calculate the average of the purchase price and the face value. And then finally, we'll put it all together in step four. We will calculate this approximate yield to maturity. So let's put all this together and uh, we will uh, drop it into our formula. So step one is calculating this per period uh, change in uh, price. So uh, we have, uh, let's write it down a little lower here. We have 100, that's our face value, subtract the purchase price. We remember we had a 97.5. If you don't remember, rewind the video. You'll see it there. Uh, all right, now, this is the change in price. This is what we paid, and this is what it's gonna mature at. Now we have to do this per period. Well, remember, we had a six-year bond that was paying interest on a semi-annual basis, so there are 12 periods. So this is gonna take care of calculating the change in price per period. Uh, and uh, so uh, let's uh, do this calculation. So we'll clear the calculator and now let's enter this. 
hundred minus ninety seven point five and we'll divide this by twelve so this gives us a figure of uh, point two zero eight three 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 this is the price gain per period be aware that might be a question what's the price gain per period now we learned in another video if you don't remember go and check out one of my earlier videos about how to store this in the memory so here it is at sto and we'll store that in number one okay now let's go back to our formula uh, let's let's return to our formula and uh, fill in the remaining part the the interest income now let's uh, add this in so we had a four dollar coupon that was annual but let's divide it by two that's a two dollar coupon uh, uh, per period so now we've got the interest income and uh, and so now we can calculate this second part so let's go back to our calculator we're going to recall this uh, value from our memory and we're now going to add a two to it and again let's store this in number one all right now it's all stored uh, let's put in the denominator from our formula and uh, this was the purchase price which was 97.5 plus the face value, which was 100, and we will divide this by two to get the average. So let's calculate this. We'll come over to our calculator and uh, 97.5 plus 100, and we will divide this by two. And now we're gonna store this in number two. All right, so I've got my values, I've done them all, uh, and now let's do step four. Let's put it all together. So we're going to take the numerator. Uh, so let's uh, uh, recall this. That was 2.208333. And now we're going to divide it by, and we're going to recall where we stored this in number two, 9875. And uh, we're going to get decimal 02236. Let's multiply this by 100. So this gives us the yield uh, on a semi-annual basis. Let's multiply this by two times two, and it gives us an answer of 4.4725. So uh, let's just uh, compare this to our previous answer. Our previous answer gave us 4.4797. Our approximate yield is 4.4725. So they're very close. They're close to three decimal, uh, to two, sorry, to two decimal places, but the answer may go to three decimal places. So what I want you to be aware of is cracking the code for your exam. If they ask you for the approximate yield to maturity, uh, then we've got to use the formula and you're going to need to get this down to three or four decimal places. Uh, do not plug it into your calculator and use these time value of money buttons. Okay, that will give us the yield to maturity if we calculate the yield here, but that's gonna give us a slightly different answer. So uh, I hope that this cracks the code for you. I just wanna review that if we use the calculator, we can calculate the yield to maturity. Uh, and we can get a certain value. Remember about the inflows and outflows. Okay, that is critical here. Otherwise, you're gonna get that error five. You don't wanna get that error five. If the question asks you for the approximate yield to maturity, then it's an exam signal that you've gotta use the formula. And there's a slight difference in the, in the third and uh, certainly the fourth decimals. And that may be where the answer lies. Okay, well, I hope this helps you get an extra mark on your exam, and, uh, and I want to wish you a happy studying. All right, so we'll uh, see you in the next video.